dating is a dance of attraction and compatibility. And most YouTubers will have you hyper-focus on attraction and assume that compatibility and character will naturally follow. And when we think of character, we think of, or we can think of loyalty. And today I wanna lean into the conversation of loyalty, those couples that actually bond together and are loyal together and how men go about this. All right, now before we dive into it, I wanna share with you, I was binge watching the Jewish matchmaker on uh, Netflix. And if you haven't seen it, it's a, it's, I think it's a worthwhile show. Now, mind you, it's a younger demographic for those of us that are in midlife. Uh, these are couples or individuals, I should say, that seek uh, to build a life with someone and to start a family with someone. And they have this one common thread between them that really demonstrates loyal or the potential of loyalty in a relationship. Now, what I like about the, the premise is that this matchmaker, uh, and I mean, she's from, I believe she's from Tel Aviv, and I mean, and there is a lot of cultural components to this. In fact, one of the cultural components is the emphasis on family and how the family is involved in the mating process, or excuse me, the courtship process, I should say. And I think that's something unique for those in several different types of cultures, it's not the same here in the United States. For those in the United States, I think a lot of people are just winging it because their family isn't involved in the, in the decision-making process. But this one common thread that I see is that not only is the family in the decision-making process, there's a level of intentionality, a level of intentionality. So you'll see that they actually ask much deeper questions on the first, second, or third dates to determine that compatibility. And remember I said earlier how a lot of the YouTubers in, in the genre I'm in hyper-focus on all the things to develop attraction? And yet very few of them actually lean into the conversation of compatibility and character. So how do we determine compatibility? Well, I think we have to get assessment of who they are by asking questions about their life. Now, this is much more challenging for those of us in midlife because in midlife, we come to the table with, lack of a better word, we come to the table with baggage or luggage. In fact, many people at midlife have had have gone through a significant breakup, a significant divorce, and with that comes emotional traumas that makes it difficult for many people to lean into a healthy, happy relationship. In fact, if you're familiar with love attachment style, you might be aware of something called the avoidant love attachment style, fearful avoidant, disorganized, uh, anxious, disorganized avoidant. If you're not familiar with the book uh, Attached by Amir Levine and Rachel Heller, hold on a second. I'll grab it for you right here. And by the way, all the books I recommend, there's a link below. To under understand attachment style and think about loyalty is about being attached to someone. So when we get an understanding how humans attach to one another, we get a better sense of how they can be loyal to one another. How we attach, you know, we, again, we hyper-focus on attraction. We hyper-focus on love and love will just naturally solve all our problems. If we love each other, we'll naturally solve our problems. Yet, sadly, many people say the words, I love you, without the real meaning behind it. And I'm going to talk about that again in a few moments. So what does it take for a man to actually demonstrate his loyalty? What does it take to show someone that he's loyal to you? Well, I think first and foremost, we have to establish building trust with one another is an essential piece of loyalty in a relationship, building trust. You know, it's fascinating to me today, and, and, and I'm guilty of what I'm about to say is, but we hyper-focus on the physical aspect of the relationship instead of the emotional aspect of the relationship, which is including building trust. And trust isn't just about fidelity. I want you to think about trust for a moment. Trust is, can I count on this person to 
care about my feelings? Can I count on them to care about my well-being? Do they have my best interest at heart? Think about it. People have sex before any trust is built. Or very, let me reframe that, very little trust is built. In fact, we have a false sense of trust basically because we today, you know, especially with, okay, let me rewind for a second. The fact of the matter is most of the time we're meeting total strangers uh, in the dating marketplace, okay? What's interesting about the Jewish matchmakers is some of these couples actually have affiliations with other people within their family that builds a sense of familiarity, builds a sense of trust. Because when you know somebody that, when you're dating somebody and you know somebody that knows them, you get a sense of their character more so than a total stranger. And just remember this, total strangers can tell you whatever they want. It may not be the truth, might be the truth the way they see it, but it might not be the truth. So just remember that. So building trust requires asking deeper questions in the early stage of dating and also demonstrating a level of commitment to one another. Again, with the hyper focus on attraction and chemistry, oftentimes the necessary components of building trust and commitment isn't prevalent. And more importantly, the building of emotional connection through emotional maturity and emotional maturity is the capacity to be vulnerable to be authentic, to be transparent with someone. This is why in my private coaching, I have a section called Dating in the 21st Century, which includes a, an exercise called Radical Honesty, pre-qualifying your prospect. This is where you start by being transparent if it's material to, to people. You lay your cards on the table early on, and then you establish the rules of engagement. And what I mean to say is you establish your standards of what you're looking for in a relationship. But Jonathan, I'm always told to go on a first date and just have a lively conversation, have fun. It's just, uh, you know, just have fun. It's all about having fun on the first date. Folks, I'm here to say, with the advent of easy access to people through our devices, we actually, have, my invitation for everyone, and again, this is what I teach in my private coaching right here, my invitation for everyone is to do a better job screening, screening out the wrong people and screening in the person who's more aligned to who you are and what you want. Because ultimately, if you begin to do a better job of screening out the wrong people and screening in the right people, the right people will demonstrate this piece of loyalty that's so critical for establishing a healthy, happy relationship. And I just laid out building trust, establishing commitment, being vulnerable, authentic, and transparent. And then this one piece truly demonstrate that someone is building loyalty with you and that is through the integration of each other's lives to one another. That's right, the integration of each other's lives. What does that look like? That's doing social activities. That's doing hobbies. That's doing mutual interest. That's spending time with family and friends. That's traveling together, teamwork building skills, both in your personal and professional life. And of course, intimacy, both physical and emotional intimacy, the integration of each other into your lives will begin the develop the roots of loyalty and attachment. But the reality is, is, and I know many of you are suffering, first and foremost, the hardest thing to find is someone you're attracted to. You're not attracted to 99.9% .9 of the men out there. And men, men are, men's standards for attraction is lower, but their, sta their standard, yeah, men will just sleep. Men's standard to whom they sleep with is much lower than who they'll commit to. This is why taking time, like in the in the J Jewish matchmaker, there's a, I don't know the Yiddish term, but there's a Yiddish term where you can't touch one another until you're under the chuppah, which means you're getting married. But here today, we can kiss on the first date. We can have sex on the third date. There can be a lot of physical components to the relationship with this, without establishing the deep roots of loyalty, the deep roots of trust through your actions. So I said earlier, I talked about I love you. 
When a man is loyal to you and he says the words, I love you, this is what it's going to mean behind the words. I'm here. You matter. We are important. I've got your back. I'm not going anywhere. And I only want you. I'm here means I'm present. I'm not thinking about a past relationship. I'm not in love with my ex. I'm not overtly flirting with an ex. I'm here. I'm present to you. You matter. That means I make time for you. You are someone that matters in my life. I'm making time for you. In addition, we are important. We are important. What that means is our relationship is a separate entity and it requires a nurturing within this separate entity. And I recognize the importance. I've got your back. That means I care about your best interest. I care about your best interest. I'm not going anywhere. I'm fully committed to this relationship and I only want you really means I only want to have physical intimacy with you. I'm not swiping on Instagram. I'm not addicted to pornography. I only want you to satisfy my loins, if you will. I love you. I'm here. You matter. We're important. I've got your back. I'm not going anywhere and I only want you. When a man can demonstrate those actions, through that intentionality, through that vulnerability, that authenticity, transparency, through that establishing commitment and declaring commitment to one another. And through this building of trust, that will give you a sense of loyalty from this person. You know, sadly, our dating marketplace is a lot of people who are doing what I just call shoe shopping. They're, they're just going out shoe shopping. They try some shoes on for size. They actually walk around in the shoes. They walk out in the parking lot with the shoes. They, they go to parties with the shoes. And then they bring the shoes back and go, here, I want to return them. That's how people are dating today. See, with the Jewish matchmaker, there's this sense of intentionality. We are meeting with the intent of exploring a possible relationship together instead of shoe shopping. So how do we do this? We ask better questions before we ever meet someone. See, ideally, it'd be great if you had a matchmaker doing some of that pre-qualifying for you ahead of time, but you have to be your own matchmaker. You have to ask those questions ahead. Otherwise, you can go on date after date after date after date, and you can, you know, um, roll the dice. But when you're dealing in a midlife category of a lot of emotionally fucked up people, emotionally damaged people, emotionally wounded people, the reality is, is probably 80% of the population who are single over 45 years old are not even capable of, of a relationship with you. They're capable of occasional companionship, their occasional connection, occasional sex, but not all of the things I just outlined that builds loyalty. So this is a screening process of you, is screening out the wrong people and screening in the right people. Is this sinking in? Is this resonating? Please let me know. So I wanna end on one note before I take questions. Uh, Marie and I were having a conversation yesterday, and she doesn't agree with my dating vows, okay? My dating vows is basically, I'll, I'll just recite it for everyone. This is a conversation two people have before they explore the physical aspect of a relationship, before they get too overtly attached on the physical level. And the question that what you say, there's a saying, have you ever heard the saying, women are the gatekeepers of sex and men are the gatekeepers of commitment? The dating vow is before you're physically intimate with someone. And it says, I agree to explore the process of getting to know you with the intent to declare something serious within the next three to six months. I agree to be monogamous sexually if we are having regular sex together. I agree to actively not to actively seek to meet and date others while we're in the dating process, including taking down our dating profiles. I agree to speak up if this isn't working for me versus pulling back, ghosting, or disappearing. Um, and I agree to invest regular time in this relationship, which looks like you know, social activities, hobbies, mutual interests. Okay, so she doesn't agree with me on this. Oh, by the way, there's a link below to get a copy of my dating vows. You can just go in the description and find a link to get it. 
I understand why she thinks that way. And, and for those that don't overtly attach to someone very quickly, then there might not be the necessity for this. But for those of you that attach quickly, particularly through sex, I think it's important to have a conversation, especially conversation about maybe uh, safety, you know, STDs, that sort of STDs, that sort of thing. Have a conversation before you're physically intimate with someone. Because the reality is, is when we begin to bond to somebody who isn't intentional, who are the what I call those spenders or users, not the grower and builders that I talk about in my videos, it can be devastating. Now, will this prevent someone, prevent, I mean, will this cause someone to um, agree to all this? Probably not. 90% of guys won't agree to it. They'll think it's a turnoff. But you know what? If someone genuinely likes you, he's actually not going to have a problem with it. Believe it or not, when I shared it with Marie, because she liked me, she didn't have a, you know, it might have been a little bit of a turnoff, but not enough to say a turnoff to say a deal breaker. And I'm here to encourage everyone to ask deeper questions before you get too attached to someone. Is this sinking in? Is this resonating? Please let me know. Please post a comment below. I'd like to hear your thoughts on this.